Next, we're going to take a look at the linearity properties of a circuit. What do we mean by linearity? Well, a circuit is linear when using only linear elements, such as a resistor, capacitor, or inductor, and independent sources. When you look at linearity, we need to look at two properties. One is homogeneity, and the other is additivity. What do we mean by homogeneity? Well, if I have a function, x, where x is the input, and it's a y as my output. Now if I double my input, and in general, let's say I multiply it by a scalar k, then my output would be multiplied by that scalar k as well. Again, if I double my input, I double my output. The second property of linearity is additivity. That is, when I take individual inputs, called x1 and x2, then the output is just due to each input. And that's what we mean by linearity. Also note that here I've changed this y to an x. That was a typo. But it doesn't change the concept that if I double my input, I double my output. The property of homogeneity is often called proportionality and the other property additivity is often called superposition and we'll discuss those next now let's look at the proportionality property we'll draw a block diagram here we'll call this x the input draw a block and we'll call this a multiplier k, or scalar multiplier. We'll call this the y output. Now for linear resistive circuits, proportion, proportionality states that every input-output relationship can be written as y equal to kx, where again, x is the input current or voltage, and y is an input current or voltage in case some type of scalar constant. So here the law of proportionality or the proportionality property applies to linear circuits with one input. As a word of caution, proportionality only applies when the input and output is a current or a voltage. It does not apply to output power since power is equal to the product of the current and voltage that is, our output power is not linearly related to the input current or voltage. So let's look at some circuit examples that illustrates the concept of proportionality. We already looked at several. One of them is the voltage divider. Here we have a voltage source as our input X and our output voltage is Y across this R2 resistor. In other words, our output voltage, VO, is equal to the ratio of R2 over R1 plus R2 times our input, VS, which we can say that's just KVS, where K is just the ratio of R2 all over R1 plus R2. So if I double my input, we can see that our output is doubled. If I triple my input, my output is tripled. So this is one circuit example illustrating the concept of proportionality. The other one is the current divider circuit where we have two resistors in parallel with a current source, IS. Our IS is our input X and our IO through resistor or conductance G2 is our output Y. In other words, IO is just the ratio of G2 over G1 plus G2 times our input IS K IO 
where k this time is just g2 all over g1 plus g2. Let me note a correction here where this IO should read as IS. So in other words, your KIS, where IS is your input, yields an output IO. So that's just a typo shown here that I made earlier. So these are two examples of the proportionality constant K, one for the voltage divider circuit and one for the current divider circuit. Let's take a look at the following bridge circuit where we have an input source VS and our output is due to the difference between VA minus VB. That is VO is equal to VA minus VB according to how we labeled our voltages here. So we're asked to prove that this has a proportionality factor of K and we want to express this relationship VO is equal to KVS. First we note that in VA we can recognize that this is just a voltage divider where VA is equal to the resistor R3 over the total in that leg R1 plus R3 times Vs. We also note that Vb can be calculated using the voltage divider which is Vr4 all over R2 plus R4 times Vs as well. Now our output again is defined as VA minus VB so we can substitute this expression for VA and this expression for B, VB into VO. This gives us factoring out the VS just R3 all over R1 plus R3 minus R4 all over R2 plus R4 times Vs. Now we can put simplify this expression by putting the as a common denominator which is just R1 plus R3 times R2 plus R4. Now the numerator would be R3 times R4 plus R2 times R3 minus R4 times R1 minus R3 and R4. We see that the R3's and R4's cancel just leaving R2, R3 minus R4 and R1 all over we write the denominator R1 plus R3 and R2 plus R4. We note in the numerator that the proportionality constant and this again multiplied by Vs. So this is our proportionality constant K. Again we look at our numerator and we can make it either by selection of our resistors to make it equal a negative number, equal to zero, and greater than zero or positive. When R2 and R3 is selected to be equal to the product of R4 and R1, then this numerator is equal to zero and we say that this bridge circuit is balanced which makes sense because R1 and R3 is sort of like in parallel with R2 and R4 and so if these resistors are equal then there will be no output voltage VO. We can put a potentiometer in one of these resistors so we can force this output to be zero by adjusting the potentiometer.